Hello, my name is Ferran Glenfield. I am the Church of Ireland Bishop of Kilmore, Elfin and Arda. And I'm speaking to you from the warmth and comfort of my kitchen. It's December and outside it's dark and dank. And yet for Christians, this is the season of Advent, which gives way to Christmas and Epiphany. Seasons of hope, light and life. My hope and prayer is, is that you watch these online services in December and possibly going into the new year, that in Christ Jesus, you may know the light and hope and life. God bless. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Cavan Parish Church. Today is the third Sunday in Advent and our service is morning prayer. In our service today we'll be thinking especially of the young people of the diocese and in particular our uniformed organisations, the Girls Friendly Society and the Boys Brigade and members of those organisations will be leading us in our service. We come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to seek the forgiveness of our sins, and to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. We sing our opening hymn. Sun. 
he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. O God, our loving Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have broken your commandments. We have often been selfish, and we have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image, in the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon our path. O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm forever in the heavens. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. So may the light of your presence shine into our hearts. We will now have our three readings from Holy Scripture. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour, who has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. God has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. The Lord has shown strength with his arm and scattered the proud in their conceit casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lonely. God has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, beginning at verse 16. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, obtain from every form of evil, May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This one who calls you faithful, and he will do this.
our Saviour Christ. According to St. John chapter 1, beginning at verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify the light, so that all in life believed through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself, he said. I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptising if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptise with water, among you stands one whom who you, who you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the tongue of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptising. And now we join together in singing our second hymn. to you two of my old acquaintances. On my left hand side, Mr. Good as New, and on my right hand side, Mr. Well Read. How can you tell them apart? Well, Mr. Good as New lives up to his name. His trousers are always perfectly pressed. His cardigan still has the label from the shop on it. His shoes are beautifully polished. There's nowhere even a hint of a scuff mark. And he smells fresh and clean. I always loved the smell of a new book. Although 
perhaps there's just a little whiff of mustiness about him. Whereas Mr. Wellmed, he cuts a very different figure. His jersey is worn and has patches at the elbows. His trousers are shapeless and distinctly shabby. His shoes are in need of a good polish and maybe even a visit to the cobblers. And, well, I'm embarrassed to say, but there's a bit of a smell of body odour off him, but we'll not go into that today. So, where do these two gentlemen live? Well, Mr. Good as New has a bijou penthouse apartment on the top shelf of the highest bookcase in the house. He's therefore out of reach of most people, but he shares his accommodation with Mr. Pear's Encyclopedia, the 1995 edition, and also the Guinness Book of Records, 2010. Whereas Mr. Wellread, well, I'm afraid he's really of no fixed abode. You can find him on the kitchen table or on top of the television or maybe even sprawled out on the sofa. Wherever you find people, he'll be there. And what kind of people are they really? Well, Mr. Good is new is invariably polite, if a little distant and formal. Sometimes he speaks in an all kind of English that it's hard for us to really understand. I suppose he's been secluded so long that he's really lost the ability to communicate properly. But I reckon if he had a few visits from people, he'd come out of his shell again. Whereas Mr. Wellread, he is completely different. He's so sociable and easy to get on with. He's a great listener. And if ever you need helpful advice, he'll always be there for you and you can depend on him. And you know, if ever you feel a little down or maybe anxious about someone or possibly even afraid of something that will happen, he will very quietly and gently give you all the consolation and encouragement you need to keep going. And the more you get to know him, the more you'll learn from him. He has so much to offer. I really commend him to you highly. We're now in the season of Advent. And Advent is the time of year when we think about what God is saying to us in Holy Scripture and what it means for us today. This year in Cavan Church, we're looking at the prophet Isaiah and what he said about the coming of the Messiah. And then also how his prophecies were fulfilled in the stories of Jesus that we read in the Gospels. But we don't have to depend upon our own IQ to decipher what God is saying to us. Because God's Holy Spirit, who lives in each one of us, can open our eyes so that we can see what he's saying to us and can open our hearts so that we can receive it and put it into practice in our own lives. That is what Advent is all about for us today. And, you know, wherever your Bibles hold up at this time, whether it's a Mr. Good as New or Mr. Well Read, I urge you, I beg you, to take him down, to dust him off, to open him up and begin to read. You'll never regret it. 
And so I say a prayer for all of us today. Heavenly Father, this Advent, we thank you for your word made known to us in Holy Scripture. We pray that you will give us the faith to receive it, the wisdom to understand what you are saying to us, and the courage to put it into practice. And we ask these things through the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, having heard about the importance of God's Word in Holy Scripture, we sing a hymn about the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E, yes that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E, yes that's the book for me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, <laughs> born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. The Collect for the Third Sunday of Advent. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. That at your second coming, to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. A prayer for the season of Advent. O oh God, you sent your Son into the world to be the Saviour of all who believe. And you have promised that he would come again to be our judge. Increase in us an attitude of watchfulness and prayer, so that we may always be ready to meet him. With our lamps trimmed and burning brightly, and our lives active in his service. To the glory of your name. Amen. A prayer to prepare ourselves to celebrate Christmas. Lord, as Lord God, as we prepare for Christmas and all that means, may we not fail to prepare ourselves for the great festival. Help us in these busy days to find them time to think of what Christmas really means. Your love for the world, the coming of the promised Redeemer, the mystery of the word. So like Mary, may we treasure these things and keep them in our hearts to be ready to join the joyful worship of Christmas Day. To the glory of your name. Amen. Son of man, our friend and brother, 
You were born in a stable because there was no room in the inn. While we are celebrating your birthday in the comforts of our homes, we remember those who have no homes or live in inadequate dwellings. Give us understanding of their need and what we can do to help. And make us generous in our love and gifts because of Bethlehem, because of your great love for us. Amen. A prayer for all of need at Christmas time. Loving Father, as we thank you for the joy of Christmas, for we bring you those for whom this season is, clo is clouded by sickness or anxiety, poverty or unemployment, loneliness or bereavement. Keep them from bitterness or despair, as they remember the board of him who for our sakes became poor, so that we might possess the true riches and may and may the song of the angels find an echo in their hearts. For Jesus' sake, Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now join together in singing our final hymn. From the squalor of a borrowed stable By the spirit and the virgin's faith To the anguish and the shame of scandal Came the savior of the human race But the skies were filled with the praise of heaven Shepherds listen as the angels tell Of the gift of God come down to man At the dawning of Emmanuel King of heaven, now the friend of sin Humble servant in the Father's hands Filled with power and the Holy Spirit Filled with mercy for the broken man Yes, he walked my road and he felt my pain Joys and sorrows that I know so well Yet his righteous steps give me hope of a friend's betrayal He was lifted on a cruel cross He was punished for a world's transgressions He was suffering to save the lost He fights for breath He fights for me Loosing sinners from the claims of Shout, our souls are free, death defeated by Emmanuel. Now he's standing in the place of honor, crowned with glory on the highest throne. Interceding for his own beloved Till his father calls to bring them home Then the skies will part as the trumpet sounds Hope of heaven or the fear of hell But the bride will run to her lover's arms Giving glory to him
us say together, Be with us, Lord, today and every day. May our lips always speak the truth. May the ears which have heard your word listen only to what is good. For the glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Gladden your hearts and scatter the darkness from before you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and all whom you love, this day and for evermore. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.